Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter, the master of hoppets. Today checking out some more cloud water and the veil haze. So, Chubbles. The Chubbles Cubed, I think you call it, the enhanced was crazy, triple IPA. But since they've done all these Chubble variants, they've done many different things. Some of them been, has been released in Denmark. One of them was Chubbles Chubbles, which we reviewed, which was the one that was more or less more classic juice compared to the enhanced. And then they also did a single IPA. And I kind of wanted to check that out, but I never ended up buying it just because I've been a bit juiced out. And this is actually only the only hazy IPA or the actually the only IPA I have at the moment. So it's just like, you know, I was thinking, should I get it to review it? I don't know. Well, I didn't. And now and then it was gone. So <laughs> there you go. But uh, we still have this one to try, which will be fun. This is Chubbles number two, Discovering Pilsengris. So this is not crazy triple IPA, this is a double IPA on 8%. And it's a very different hop combo compared to, uh, well, it does have some similar hops, but it's got Galaxy, Citra, Enigma, Amarillo, and Vic Secret. So yeah, it's the second journey, it says, for their Chubbles beers. I'm guessing this is the se se second time or the, the first time they did a different take on it. So yeah, and I like that it's a double IPA, not a triple IPA. Triples, you know, when they are crazy, they can be so over the top and awesome and great for sharing. But often I prefer singles or doubles. But yeah, let's check out the Chubbles Discovering Pills and Grizz out. I wonder what Pills and Grizz is. I have no idea. It must be something to do with like space and, and the universe and stuff like that because everything on these are often or well, are references to to space stuff. So let's check this one out. Pours a nice hazy golden yellow color. It looks like a, a juice bomb. It's um it's a little it's got a little bit of brightness to it, but otherwise it's that classic hazy orange look. Making me think of classic juice, but it does smell a bit dank from here, which I like. Like when we, we're talking IPAs and they're hazy, I just get sick of them when they're sweet and overripe and just gushing fruit juice nowadays. They need some of that dank, cushy good good for me to get excited. And from here it smells like that. So let's check out Chubbles too. Ooh, interesting. So it has some of that, but it's got a huge like earthy profile too. And like read the resiny. And also the classic overripe, over juicy profile. Not over juicy, but just like really big juicy fruit. I'm also getting like, that was almost like a sour apricot thing. It does smell heavily saturated. Wow, it's, uh, it's, I don't know if that's Enigma, but it has like almost something that also reminds me of Equinot, like this earthy, uh, maybe it's a combo. It could also be from Amarillo, I guess. Cause I've gotten that from beers with both Equinot and Amarillo, at least, uh, together. It's like a, a really pithy, earthy, sweet orange, an orange rangy thing. I'm getting that here for sure. Like earthy orange, but there's also like a hashy uh, dankness. It's more like earthy, so it's not like really fresh kush. It's more of like think hash. We're talking so much. Like I'm promising you guys, we're not potheads. We're not. <laughs> I'm definitely getting that. There is some spiciness to it as well. There's some pineapple, but also, like the more I smell, I get bright kind of hop characters, but there's definitely a lot of overripeness going on too. Stone fruit. And that earthiness is quite interesting. There's almost, maybe it's, I don't know. It's maybe it's the gris in the name, thinking of like Pinot Gris or something. There's almost a great quality. And definitely also a classic galaxy overripe melon. I think it smells pretty good, but it's definitely more like Chubbles Chubbles um, than the Chubble en Enhanced, like in terms of like bright, dank cops. But let's try it, cheers. Also brought this back from a trip to the UK a few weeks back, cheers. Oh, a whole lot more than a few weeks by now. Ooh, hmm, diesel-y, dank, earthy. This was not what I expected. I like that. <laughs> Almost like licorice. It's really bright and really snappy and really dry. If you're expecting a total gushing juice bomb, this is not it. It's really peppery and earthy. And it offers something nice and different. And I actually dig that. Do you know what it really reminds me of? There is 
these in Denmark, it's there's a series of candies that got a lot of controversy back in the day called the brand is called Bong Bong. And they even had an amusement, I think they still do, an amusement amusement park called Bong Bong Land. And there's videos of if you look up Bong Bong Land on YouTube, you'll see videos of Americans and whatnot going there being just like uh, crazy surprised and I don't know if I'd say outraged, but they were just like, what? Because they're walking around filming and then there's like sculptures with cows with huge, well, tits that's just like falling out. And then it's called, oh, I can't remember the name of the candy. There's, it was such like, it was so Danish, like just not really being too held back in terms of crazy marketing. And like a lot of old Danish marketing has been very out there and very like uh, very sexually open. So it's like some of those candy names was like a piece of mirror, which was like, well, how do you chance like that? Something with ants peeing. I don't know, it's a, kind of like, I don't know if it's a derogatory t thing in Danish, but it's like it, with an ant just like standing, taking a huge piss and like the earwax and like all of them like were out there, but it was supposed to be like out there things that kids would find funny. And the one with the cow, I can't remember the name. I think it was just called something with Uwa, Stor Uwa. Uwa is the, a, a cow teat. It was something like that. And then the candy was sh shaped like a cow teat. Like, I think they, they're not making like any of these like anymore, except, except a mix of hard candies called Losserpleschen, the dumpster. And it reminds me a bit of one of the candies in that mix. It was separate. I think it was called Kloakslam, which means uh, sur dre, uh, sur gunk, or it's sur sludge, and it was, it had like a rat on the label with like fire going, I need to find some pictures of these candies, because they were so out there, but it's almost like that, because it has like a, a, those had like a salty licorice on the inside, which is very Danish, and some of them were like apricot flavored, or pineapple flavored, I'm getting a bit of that in this, and it's really unique, I think it's like, almost like, it's like a really sharp herbal character, which is licorice-like, licorice root-like, with that like overripe fruit profile, which is just like leading me to think of Clarkslam. <laughs> Hard candies with fruit and licorice. There you go. And earthiness and holy fuck it, what's going on? Heart, heart candy licorice thing. That's uh. That's different. It's almost like a really intense spicy thing, earthy thing. I actually really dig it. It's like sharp, dry spice. It's almost like supercharged noble hop, like supercharged black pepper or something like that with lots of fruit. Like, but it just offers something different and something to counteract juice. I dig it. A lot of people apparently don't. Like this is one of the lower rated, lowest rated variants of Chubbles. It's also like, it feels like it doesn't, it's not like necessarily bitter, but I think it's high saturation that makes it feel like drying and almost like, it's a different type of bitterness. It just feels a bit more bitter maybe than a lot of the others. It's actually, and it's surprisingly drinkable. It's not like crazy thick or anything. It's more dry, which I really dig. Lots of pineapple too, and that apricot. It's so spicy. There's herbal, nettly, um, yet yeah, minty almost. Very much like, um, yeah, like it, when you have pho, all the different herbs you sit and pick and, and have with your, your pho. It's almost like that thing like um, like uh, uh, Thai basil or something like that. Like, like really intense Thai basil-y thing that's almost licorice-y as well. It's something like that. It's a really unique up character. It's like... It's really towards that spicy quite side, supercharged, but also with a lot of fruit. Like there's definitely, again, it's like quite tropical and stone fruity, which just worked quite well. I'm actually surprised how much I like it. And maybe it's just because it's offering something different than just like overripe juice. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. I, I do. 93.4, something like that. It's almost, and maybe it's like a crazy phenolic character. It could be compared, uh, combined with, with hops. But yeah, if you guys had to ch a chance to try Troubles number two, Discovering Pills and Gris, let me know what you thought of it. Quite out there, crazy hop flavor on this. Almost like a bit yeast flavor, I guess. A bit funky in some ways, but it's really good. So almost like, it's almost like crazy well hop, like Deranke, triple X bitter. I'm almost getting throwbacks to that because of all that spice. 
That's kind of crazy, but it's really nice. So yeah, if you guys had this, let me know what you thought of it. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm on site. Cheers. And see you guys in another video.